Welcome back to Talk of the Town with Henry Hinton. Look, we all go way back, and uh, I owe you from the thing with the guy in the place, and I'll never forget it. On 103.7. You guys are pros. The best. WTIB. Welcome back. Hour two here on Talk of the Town here on 103.7 WTIB and on 94.1 WNBU. And uh, we'll be here all week through Friday. Michael, what are the, uh, how about the new, the new Newburn show? Are they going to do their show Friday morning? Guess we need to find that out, don't we? You guys on top of that? Um, we'll have to find out. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Right on top of it, aren't we? I'm on the, top of it. Yes. Really, <laughs> you really are. It's um, it's Fourth of July week, I guess. I, we're trying to decide whether most people will that are going to celebrate like a week long event are going to take this week off or next week. And um, I'm thinking a lot of people are taking you know this week. I, I'm thinking to probably by Wednesday. If people have any vacation time, they're going to probably try to get out of town a little early. Since the 4th of July is on Saturday mm-hmm. this year. Is that correct? It is on Saturday, right? Yep. Um, the, uh, the official federal holiday for the 4th of July is Friday, which is July 3rd. So we will take Friday morning off. We will not be on the air. And we'll let you know about, the, uh, uh, about our new program, uh, City Talk, on 94.1 WNBU, which I understand went very well on Friday. Good. Te- Thank you, Michael. All the technical stuff, all the squirrels were fed. The trains ran. The, uh, the work wheel went fine. And uh, we got the show on with Lee Bettis and Sabrina Bingle. So uh, my guess is they'll probably do a show on Friday. But we'll find out. Seven minutes after 8 o'clock, Maddie Engelbrecht from WITN News is here. How are you this morning? Sore and sunburned. Yeah, we'll start with that. Yeah. yeah. I want to get into your weekend. Uh, m- m- uh, Trent McGee is... Uh, is out this week. He is uh, he he is vacationing mm-hmm. this week, and so McGee will not be here this week. He is uh, on vacation down at um, the Outer Banks, Nags Head. His family does that uh, every year. There's a dividing line, and I've always said it's about Williamston. Uh-huh. Williamston North. Everyone vacations in Nags Head area because I grew up up there, and that's where you go vacation. Mm-hmm. Williamston South, everybody goes to the Carteret County beaches, to uh, Atlantic Beach, Emerald Isle, Pine Knoll Shores, uh, down that way. Some people go to Topsail. Who did I hear was going to vacation at Topsail this week? Um, I've only been to Topsail Island a couple of times, but it's very nice. Mm-hmm. But it's, you know, it's it, if here's the thing. It, you're, there's just not as many restaurants and stuff. I the one thing I love about Carteret County is um, it's the best, in my opinion, of all worlds because you get the best of the ocean. You get the best of the, uh, the sound if you want to go boating. Mm-hmm. And seriously, some of the best restaurants in the world in Carteret County, I would have to say. So that's, my, that's yeah. why I love Carteret County. Now, and, being in, in Greenville, we've, we've split. Um, some weekends we'll go up. To Nags Head, Kitty Hawk, and then other weekends we'll go down to uh, Carteret County. I think the advantage Carteret County is the water, 81, 82 degrees. Yeah. You say that and you can't help but. Yeah, head Nags down Head water is pretty cold. Mm-hmm. Usually, I remember taking the children when they were small. To, we, you know, you go out there in mid June, it yeah. would still be freezing. But if you're a surfer, yeah, yeah, I mean, you can't really lose Nags Head or down. You know, what is it like? Isn't it, you know, we take for granted uh, that we live in this region where you can just hop in the car and be at the beach in an hour and a half, right? Or an hour, depending yep. on where you live, uh, you know. And of course, we we love the North Carolina coast, but you know, it's amazing that you know we live right here on it, and there are people all over the country yeah. who wish that they lived here. Yeah. And so, what's it like for a guy who grew up in in Michigan? Yeah. To all of a sudden find yourself here and able to hop in the car on the weekends. I mean, is it a big deal to you or is it not as big a deal as it was it's weird. Amazing you say that. It's awesome and amazing yeah. that you say that. Uh, yesterday we were sitting there on the beach and I turned to Michelle 
And, uh, and I said, you know, three-fourths of the country, they don't live on the East Coast. And we just happened to be in the ocean, at the ocean. Yeah. And, and she said, yeah, back in Michigan, Indiana, you would dream about vacation in here. And then we just took a Sunday to go to the beach. I mean, it's, it's a great experience. Yeah. It yeah. just makes you feel really small and very happy at the same time. But the thing about it is, is that, you know, I think that our people here in eastern North Carolina don't get that sometime. I, you know, yeah. I, 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 think, I, th- yeah. I think we actually live... I think we actually live in the best place that you can live in the country. That's my opinion. I agree. I with think that. that people are um, mm-hmm. finding out about this. I, I, you know, I, I continue to say that the only the, the only thing you'd change about Eastern North Carolina is the economy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If we could, if we could find a way, you know, when I grew up, it was the agricultural capital of North Carolina. No, oh, tobacco, yeah. Tobacco was huge, but I mean, up there where I grew up around the Northeast, the soil was good for growing cotton and peanuts. Mm-hmm. And But, you know, then, of course, you had a tobacco buyout and uh, all the uh, concerns about uh, people smoking mm-hmm. and that kind of thing. And that, is, that changed Eastern North Carolina pretty much. But we haven't been able to, we just have not try as we might to replace that economy. And so... What ends up happening is that, uh, you know, our kids that graduated from college, we have East Carolina University here, which is great. Um, we have Elizabeth City State. We have UNC Wilmington. We have military installations. So we have some things going for us in eastern North Carolina, mm-hmm. including all the medical here. But we need something else. We need, right. a, we need a more comprehensive economic recovery plan that the government has never really – come up with and i was very hopeful when the whole golden leaf foundation thing came around which was money of course that was earmarked to do just that Mm -hmm. replace the economy but you know the golden leaf foundation has become a a committee of people that just hear people who want grants for things Mm -hmm. and so they give money here they give money there and look they've done some really good things i've criticized them over the years dan gerlach who runs the golden leaf calls me and says, please stop doing that. But, the, you know, the, the truth of the matter is we, we need a bigger plan. We need a bigger idea for Eastern North Carolina. So um, some folks at East Carolina working on that right now and also um, the Commerce Department. And I hope that this idea of, um, you know, what we're just talking about, using yeah. this area as the, you know, to, to attract people here who want to retire. Yep. And things like that. I mean, if you can if you can develop a retirement community here, second to none, you uh, all of a sudden have uh, another version of what they have in Florida with the villages, mm-hmm. which is um, you know seventy square miles of economic development. I mean, it's unbelievable. Yeah. So uh, more to come about that. We're going to get the Secretary of Commerce on, and I will say that um, the Provost at ECU, Ron Mitchelson. Dr. Mitchelson is very involved in this at this point and coming up with some great ideas. So that's interesting. Yeah, hmm. good. But I'm glad you. Uh, I'm glad you enjoyed the beach. Did, did oh, you? You went to it. Fort Macon. Went to Fort Macon. Yep. How and, was it? Uh, it was pretty, windy. Pretty windy, wasn't it? But it was a comfortable windy. You know, last week it was 95, 94 degrees, and just so hot that you go in the water and the water's so warm you don't really cool down. But the wind kept it comfortable. Of course, you're getting sandblasted here and there when somebody stood up down down wind of view, but upwind of view. And um, but otherwise, it was, it was comfortable. And we drove through Pamlico County. That's, oh, that did was, you? Yeah. I went oh, I saw a, a you, you took the Minnesota Ferry, didn't yeah. you? Yeah. That's pretty yeah. cool to do that. Uh, did you just do that just for the heck of it? Um, Philip Williams told us, um, he said, yeah, it's only about a half hour longer if you go up through Pamlico County and down. Mm. So I told Michelle in the morning. I, I don't like, know about yeah. that. Yeah. Come on, Philip. We took our time. You know, we left at 8.30 and got on the beach at 11.00. So about two and a half hours, but it was worth it. You know, I've never been through Pamlico County like that, just to drive, mm-hmm. windows down. And it's pretty. Mm-hmm. Did you go to Oriental? We didn't. It was about eight miles. and we You were, you were almost there. there. I know. And I, I told Michelle, I said, we got 20 minutes, but we had to wait for the ferry. We well, that's the thing. The ferry, you have to so. time it so you don't miss yeah. the ferry, yeah. So um, it was great. I love it. I've crossed yeah. that uh, ferry. This is, um, this is the ferry that goes from Pamlico County, Minnesota Beach, over to... Cherry Craven Point. County to Cherry mm-hmm. Branch. Cherry Branch. Yeah, yeah, which is right behind Cherry, Cherry Point. Point. Yeah. And um, 
if you've never done that, it is kind of a it's a pretty ride. And it's free. Yeah, it's <laughs> absolutely that's in, right. It's free. You, you put you drive your car onto the boat and right. boom, here you go. Yep. So we so. enjoyed it. Yep. And that that area down there has not experienced uh, some of the problems with the other ferries where mm -hmm. it gets kind of shallow and they get uh I don't think that's one of this that's gotten hung up on yeah, sand. The dredging more. and stuff like that. Well, the, you know, some of the ferries down around Dare County, they've had real problems mm -hmm. with the with low tide. That with some of the boats actually getting stuck in, you know, stuck in the mud. Um, and I mean, the the sands are constantly shifting, yeah. so you just don't know. Yep. Uh, Fifteen after uh, eight o'clock. Um, the uh, Daily Reflector this morning is reporting there's going to be a rally today at the um, Pitt County Courthouse at 11 o'clock, uh, made up of uh, local educators, parents, and community members to protest the Senate's budget. I actually may show up down there <laughs> and help. Here's the problem. If it wasn't a bunch of Democrats doing it, I'd probably be out there helping them. Because I want to protest the Senate budget, too. I've been protesting it in my own way. Uh, I don't know that I want to end up on WITN out there protesting with Senator Don Davis, Stop though. It. Although I like Don, <laughs> I'm not sure that would be exactly what I'm trying to do here. But Also, representatives from the North Carolina so Association of Teacher Assistants. This is, about the, uh, this is about the budget provision that cuts teaching assistance and the, you know the the senate's been trying to do this forever and um you know i don't know the the the, the idea here is that they're going to t cut these teaching assistants and create more teachers thereby smaller class sizes now some people don't believe that'll happen and don't believe that that's a um, a practical approach to this I'm not going – I'm going to leave that to the experts. I don't know the answer to that. And, but I'll tell you that, that, that there's enough stuff in this Senate budget that's outrageous and going to be harmful to, uh, to the eastern North Carolina economy that, you know, anybody who wants to protest the Senate budget, I'll support them at this point. You know, I, I'm not um, – I, I'm glad that the House of Representatives is being more reasonable about the budget and the governor. In fact, the Speaker of the House, Tim Moore, is going to be here in Greenville tomorrow for a luncheon, and we're going to be discussing this with him. And um, I think it's really important for us to support the House version of the budget and the governor's version of the budget versus the Senate's version of the budget, which I think is going to be very devastating to uh, – Eastern North Carolina's economy, particularly the healthcare um, economy here with uh, Vitan Health and the Brody School of Medicine and all hospitals, really, all hospitals. So that, and um, I will say that I've talked about the advertising tax that the Senate wants to put on, and there's a general consensus now that the House of Representatives gets it and that, you know, putting a 7% tax on advertising would just crush small businesses across eastern North Carolina. I don't really get the, uh, and across the whole state. You know, I'm happy about the lower corporate tax, but, I mean, you, at some point you, you have to choose your battles. And I happen to agree with the governor right now. I think we did tax reform uh, in 2013, 2014, and... Um, we need to let it settle. We had a good year this year. We had a four hundred thousand uh, dollar surplus, a four hundred million dollar surplus come into the state. Good. Okay. Now you know what's the benefit. You know what? What are people saying? Well, let's put some of that money into the rainy day fund. Let's use it to do some things for education. Let's use it to do some things that we weren't able to do for the last few years. That's what we ought to do, and not dive deeper into something. I mean, we. You know, if you listen to economists and to economic forecasters, they're not so bullish on the, the next few years. I mean, there are a lot of people that think we could even possibly slip back into a, a slight recession. And uh, so, you know, I'm not sure that, that – uh, I, I, I agree with Governor McCrory. I think that right now we ought to let the, let the current tax reform settle before we start diving any deeper 
uh, and especially uh, if we're going to do it in the way that the Senate has um, has gone about proposing that we do it in their budget. Um, and they will continue to debate that today. Uh, the legislature will uh, reconvene tonight, I think. Monday is the day they go in late. And then uh, so there will be another House Finance Committee meeting tomorrow morning and Thursday morning. And I know that uh, the House Finance Committee um, has given a thumbs down to the Senate budget almost across the board. And the next step is going to be when they come back from the 4th of July break, which will be around July 13th, they're going to they're gonna be in session all week this week, I guess. I think they're going to go all the way through Thursday this week. And then they'll take all of next week off for the 4th of July break. And then they're coming back on July 13th. And at that point, I think we will have a conference committee made up of members of the House and the Senate, and they will start to debate the uh, finer points of the budget. And that's when the rubber meets the road and we find out whether these teacher assistants uh, are going to be lost, uh, if the uh, hospital tax uh, advantages are going to disappear, uh, if this stupid advertising tax is going to actually be a real thing or whether it's just a shot across the bow of some of the folks in the media that the Senate doesn't like. But... And, of course, the other big thing that's going to be debated is uh, Senator Harry Brown's uh, sales tax redistribution plan that would benefit some of the poorer counties at the expense of some of the um, uh, counties that are a little more prosperous. And, of course, if you were with us last week, you heard Representative Paul Tyne from Dare County say that, um, you know, it would be devastating to Dare County. I suspect it would be devastating to Carteret County as well. Uh, some of the other counties, of course, the big, big counties like Wake and uh, Mecklenburg are, would really get killed in this thing. So the question is uh, whether or not that's going to get a uh, honest hearing as well when they get into the, uh, the conferees committee. And uh, my guess is that Senator Brown's, um, you know, I have great respect for Senator Harry Brown. He's a good friend. I have great respect for him. My guess is that that bill has a very tough road to hoe when it gets into conference. I, I would be shocked if that makes the final budget. And if it does make the final budget, Governor McCrory has already said he's got his veto pen out. And, uh, you know, you got to have three-fifths of both chambers, the House and the Senate, to override a veto. They, they won't be able to get that on a budget over. They won't be able to get that on a budget veto, I don't think. I'd be surprised. But we'll talk more about that as we get closer. 22 minutes after 8 o'clock, we're going to get news headlines in. we got some folks coming in from the community uh, this morning. My buddy Stacy Gaskins is here. Stacy is going to be talking about the uh, Museum of Art, Jolly Artini. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? The Jolly Artini. So that's coming up in just a couple minutes. More talk of the town here from Monday morning, 29th of June. We'll be back. Stay with us right after this break. This month, not only will Greenville Toyota cut your payment in half, but you'll always get the Greenville Toyota Advantage, including oil changes, tire rotations, courtesy shuttle, free car washes, and loaners for life. At Greenville Toyota, if you give us 15 minutes, we can lower your payment. It's golf season, and now's the time to get to Gordon's Golf Ski and Snowboard for everything golf. Gordon's carries all the high-quality brands of clubs, including Ping, Titleist, Mizuno, Callaway, and TaylorMade. Get your old clubs repaired, reshafted, or regripped. Come in today and let our teaching pro find the right fit for you. We have a wide selection of clothing, including Travis Matthew, Adidas, Oakley, Mizuno, and Puma. We have Echo and Foot Joy shoes, too. The Sky Caddy GPS is a must-have for every golfer. Gordon's Golf Ski and Snowboard, East Arlington Boulevard, Greenville. I'm Coach Godwin. East U Pirates and the Pirate Nation are teaming up with Sheriff Neil Elks to stop bullying in Pitt County. Our children need our help. The Pitt County Sheriff's Office recognizes bullying is a big problem amongst our youth. To report bullying, contact your school resource officer. Let's all hit a home run and not bullying out of the park. I'm Henry Hinton. You've heard me talk over the years about how much I love being a patient of Dr. Thomas McIntosh. 
I love Carolina Vision Care because I can get my glasses in their optical department right on site. They've got one of the largest selections of frames anywhere and an in-house optical lab run by opticians that can make glasses many times in about an hour. And they accept most vision plans and insurances. And for people without vision insurance, they have their own vision plan that will save you money. Carolina Vision Care, we keep what's important inside. Hey everybody, guess who's never danced with a girl before? Yeah, this guy. Come on, buddy, on the 2-4. Two 2-4. Four. Two four. There you go. At Shaw Floors, we know the little moments matter. They're why we work so hard to put a carpet beneath his feet that's as awesome as he is. Boyd's Carpet, 115 West Fire Tower Road in Winterville. Call them at 321-7066. My prescription refills. My son shot records. My doctor's appointments. My lab results. My parents care. My chart. Vident My Chart. Vident My Chart is the secure online patient portal that lets you manage your health your way. Visit VidentMyChart.com or call 1 855 MyVident to learn how you can sign up. Why pay three, four, even $500 a month for a new car when Greenville Toyota can cut it in half? The average car payment is $482 a month. Our average payment is less than half. At Greenville Toyota, if you give us 15 minutes, we can lower your payment. All right, back on Talk of the Town at uh, 26 after eight. Aren't you, um, uh, Ingleberg, aren't you a soccer guy? Yeah, I enjoy soccer. Mm -hmm. Did you tell me you played soccer? I tried to. You yeah, tried I, to play I soccer. I ran really well, so they're like, all right, go out on the field and run some more. Charlotte has announced that they're going to uh, try to build a um, major league soccer stadium. How about that? Yeah. Good. That's in this morning's Charlotte Observer. The city of Good. Charlotte could use tourism dollars. Funds from taxes on hotels and prepared food and beverages to build a new stadium up to 25,000 seats if it can land a major league soccer team. Nice. Memorial Stadium, built in the 1930s in Charlotte's Elizabeth neighborhood, would be demolished to make way for the new stadium. 25,000 seats isn't that much, is it? I guess, but I mean, for how many people are going to go to a soccer game? Yeah. Yeah. What if they brought it out here to Kinston instead of uh, baseball? Think it'd take off? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> a loaded question. I don't. No. <laughs> I would not be a season ticket holder. I mean, I mean, I know there are people who love it, but you know, I didn't ever play soccer. My kids played soccer for a minute. Yeah. You know, it just they didn't. My kids didn't like it either. Yeah. I think my son played soccer for a while. When we lived in Chapel Hill, they have a huge soccer program there yeah. called Rainbow Soccer. Wouldn't you know it? Mm -hmm. Chapel Hill's name would be Rainbow Soccer. But they do have. <laughs> They have a big program there called Rainbow Soccer. It's one of the biggest uh, youth soccer uh, mm -hmm. programs uh, anywhere. And he, he, you know, he got into it there a little bit, but just never was a, never was a big soccer guy. Yeah. But I, it, soccer's a great sport, and you talk about great uh, physical fitness. Mm -hmm. But as a spectator sport, it hasn't taken off in this country. No, there's a, yeah, you need a certain... Well, it's not like part of the heritage here. Yeah. It's becoming more. Yep. And I know people who love soccer love it, but I, I just never did love it. So, And I'm sorry, soccer people. Yeah. You can say I'm just old and, and curmudgeon -y and I don't get it if you want. But You I, say that anyways. But people do say that. Yeah. It's very rude. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 28 after uh, 8 o'clock. Did you just say it? <laughs> no, no. You insinuated no, no, it. No, no, I was looking at something You else. insinuated it. No. All right, let's go to the news desk. Uh, Matt Engelbrecht is here from WITN with the very latest local news. What you got, Matt uh, time now, 8.28, uh, following latest news headlines from WI10 and WI10.com. A six-year veteran of the North Carolina Highway Patrol is recovering in a local hospital after he was hit, behind, hit from behind while sitting in his vehicle. According to the Highway Patrol, the trooper was investigating a collision on US-70 around 7.45 p.m. in LaGrange. The trooper had positioned his patrol car with all emergency equipment activated in one lane of US-70 westbound. A tow truck was in the process of removing the vehicle that had wrecked earlier. The person who struck the trooper was traveling westbound in a passenger vehicle when it failed to move over. 
Troopers believe the driver of the passenger vehicle is a man in his early 20s. And the trooper was transported to Wayne Memorial Hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. It's unclear if the driver of the passenger vehicle was injured. However, charges are pending. Investigation, investigators say they are looking for a suspect after a man was shot outside of a Kinston club early this Sunday morning. Sergeant Kivett with Kinston Police says 28-year-old Shawan Jones who was, in, was shot in the buttocks area around Stars Ultra Lounge and Restaurant in North Independence Street on North Independence Street around 3 a.m. This is Saturday night and into Sunday. Kivett says officers were called to the scene after a fight broke out inside the club. Jones, Jones was taken to Lenore Memorial Hospital where employees tell us he's been transferred to Vita Medical with non-life-threatening injuries. Employees at Vita Medical Center say Jones is in fair conditions. In condition, he says no arrests have been made, but they are following up on leads. Anyone with information is asked to contact Kinston Police. And finally, a $2.2 million building is now open as a shelter in Greenville. The Greenville Community Shelter moved to a new building and also changed its name. It's now called the Community Crossroads Facility. Now, Sunday morning it was uh, announced. The building, it actually opened Saturday night, is now equipped with a master control center, a commercial kitchen, and two LED televisions. Executive Director Bob Williams says the facility has internal and external cameras and that the building is more high-tech than the previous ones. He also went on to say that no county, city, or federal dollars were used in building the shelter. He credits community donations and support. The idea for the name, he says, is that people at the shelter are at a crossroads in their own lives. Those are our latest news headlines from WI10 and WI10.com. Time now on this Monday, 831. I'm Matty Gabrick. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Matty. Oh. 29 in front of nine. Uh, you know, we were talking earlier about the how many Republican candidates are in the uh, race now mm -hmm. and expected that. to have probably a baker's dozen before it's over with. Uh, David just emailed me. We were talking about how the debates would be handled. Mm -hmm. um, he says, good morning, Henry. Republican Party Chairman Rents Priebus, Priebus has announced that the debates will be handled as follows. An average of several of the bigger polls will be taken, and the candidates with the 10 highest averages will be included in the debates. I'm assuming that those averages will be taken by a predetermined cutoff period before each of the debates, but I don't know that for sure. Short version is that he's laid down the law and there will be no more than 10 candidate, candidates participating in any Republican presidential debate. But, you know, still 10? Mm -hmm. How do you have a reasonable discussion with 10 people? You know, you really need to have two <laughs> or three. <laughs> but 10 people on stage for these Republican debates, um, you know, I, I think they ought to get on with it soon. Because if they don't, you know, we don't need to be going, we don't need to go into January and February and still have 20 people running for the nomination. I think it's going to be hurtful because you know that Hillary's going to be the nominee on the other side. And, you know, you're going to have these Republican guys beating each other up and Hillary's going to get all the media attention. But that's my concern. Uh, news and weather this hour, a service of our friends at the Tire Realty Group and Property Management Team. And um, let's see, I believe I got some new notes from them over the weekend. Uh, the Tire Realty Group, of course, is the official real estate team of the East Carolina University Pirates. Won't be long before football uh, kicks up here. I had lunch, by the way, on Friday with Jeff Kopfer. Really excited about football. All of a sudden, I'm kind of getting juiced up for football. And by the way, I, I spent some time with Coach Logan over the weekend. And we were talking about uh, Shane Carden and how he might do at Chicago and stuff like that. Um, which we'll talk, I'll talk about that more sometime. But, uh, the uh, Tire Realty Group and Property Management Team. Uh, we've got some new uh, testimonials here this morning. Everett and Catherine wanted to sell their home quickly, but they didn't want to leave money on the table. All it took was one call to Homer Tire. With Homer's incredible marketing strategy, the home not only sold, but sold above the asking price. So put the power of the Tire Realty, work, uh, tire, tire Realty Group to work for you. Call them at 758-HOME or visit them online at GuaranteedSellNC.com. Remember the guarantee. They'll sit down with you, agree on a price and a deadline. If the deadline passes, the home's not sold. They buy the home from you themselves. 
and Tire Property Management looking for great rental properties right now as well. Working with Tire Realty Group does not obligate you to anything. If they're not doing their job, they'll let you out of the contract free and clear. Call the Tire Realty Group at 758-HOME or online at GuaranteedSellNC.com and start packing. 835 now. Maddie, thank you, my man. Good to see you. You're welcome. Good to Are see you. Are you back this week? Uh, Wednesday. See you Wednesday? Yeah. We'll Who's in then. tomorrow, Brendan? Mm -hmm. You don't know? Mm -hmm. you, just, you just know when you're here. Mm -hmm. I got it. <laughs> we appreciate you. <laughs> we will be back when we come back. We're going to find out about the Jolly Artini <laughs> when we come back. It's a good time of year for an Artini. We'll uh, talk to uh, some folks from the Greenville Museum of Art next. We'll be right back. And now, homemade made easy with Ann. Spend more time with the family, not in the kitchen, with this quick recipe. Boil water. Add Ann's chicken base and butter. Add Ann's flat pastry dumplings. Add pre-cooked chicken. Add flour to thicken. Season with salt and pepper. Done. Homemade, made easy. Look for this label at your local grocer or annsdumplings.com for more ideas. Top Dog Academy is Eastern North Carolina's complete dog training facility. Top Dog provides an excellent environment for dogs of all ages with training services and work week daycare. Top Dog is located on Highway 43 South, just four miles from Bells Fork, and features a comfortable, healthy environment and a spacious facility for daycare and a brand new, beautiful facility for training. Call 752-8215 or visit topdogonline.com. Come on out Highway 43 South to Top Dog Academy, where we know dogs. Greenville Country Club is under new management and ownership, and the golf course has never been better. Investment is being made into the club and the course along with Greenville's best family pool. Zero initiation fees and no monthly minimum. And right now, you can take advantage of the opening rate of just $250 per month for full family membership. Corporate and junior memberships are also available, including just $125 per month for members under 30. Call 252-756-1237 and join the family fun at the new Greenville Country Club. Club. Uptown Greenville is the voice of the downtown. We exist to promote quality, cultural, residential, and economic development. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. I am Uptown. It's alive. Safe. It's awesome. A great place to work. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. We are Uptown. Student at East Carolina University, co-founder of eAudit.com. Sergeant with the Center City Unit. Owner of the Varsity Club. Our downtown has a name, and it's Uptown. I'm good like that. Yeah. Buy your tickets now to win this new Mercedes-Benz with a 1 in 2,000 chance to win. That's right, a 1 in 2,000 chance to win. It's the 2015 Pitt CC Foundation Mercedes-Benz raffle. Only 2,000 tickets will be sold. Buy your tickets now at pittcc.edu. Proceeds fund student scholarships. Buy your tickets now, pittcc.edu. That's pittcc.edu. Shop for price, shop for selection. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep has the lowest prices and the largest selection in Eastern North Carolina. Get to the Drive and Discover event now and save up to $6,000 on a Chrysler 200 or come enjoy the weather and test drive a new Jeep Wrangler. Summer savings are here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville or at ecauto.com. All right, back on Talk of the Town here on uh, Monday morning. Today is the 29th day of June. Good to have you here as we move into uh, July 4th weekend. And then after July 4th, as I said right before the break, everybody's thinking about football season all of a sudden. And it, uh, so like two weeks from now, we'll all be totally into football mode. And uh, we've got a good way for you to kind of get yourself geared up for football. It is the Jolly Arg Teeny which is coming up. Did I say it right? You, you got it right. It right. Uh, coming up at the um, Greenville Museum of Art on July 16th. Here to talk about that is my buddy Stacy Gaskins, who is the chair of this event. How are you? I'm doing well. Good How to see you. Happy summer. Happy summer to you. You have a nice tan. Thank you. Thank you look you like mean. you've been like traveling. I have been. I've I know. Been I've, been, I've, been, I've been looking at you on uh, Facebook. I know where you've been. <laughs> I'm keeping up with you, girl. <laughs> and uh, Luke Lembrunner, who uh, – Lembrunner. 
Did I get it right? You got it right. Who uh, who came in last time and was totally inappropriately dressed, uh, but he's wearing a suit. This you look very nice. This well, well, thank you. Uh, my my grandmother might be seeing this, and she's in Ottawa, Illinois. So we don't uh, get that far. She must you, be watching online. <laughs> oh, oh, it'll be streaming. And yeah. uh, thanks to my cousins, uh, Stephen and Emily, they'll 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 show this clip. And, uh, okay. Just want to you know. Are there any other your family members you want to talk about this morning? Uh, uh, <laughs> Love you, Mom and Dad. Yeah. <laughs> let's get a shout-out to the family up there in Illinois. All right, let's talk about this. What is the Jolly Artini? Well, the Museum of Art have three Artinis a year. Mm. They have one in February around Valentine's Day and one around Halloween, and they always have one in July, which they pick a different theme. And Grady Mullis, executive director of the museum, asked me to chair this event, and we were brainstorming about ideas, and we happened to be sitting in the scullery that morning, and I looked <laughs> up and I said, well, you know, what about a jolly Artini? And he said, great idea. So we've decided to go from that, and it's been a really – it's been a wonderful adventure. We've got an exciting event planned for everybody. That sounds uh, like a lot of fun. Now, for people who don't know what an Argatini is, I presume that it's going to include martinis. Is that right, Luke? It will. There'll be uh, signature Artinis. We're going to have a lot of uh, food from, let me see, there's going to be uh, food from Basil's. Uh, there's going to be coffee. Villa Verde. Villa Verde. And uh, also the Fresh Market and Harris Teeter have been sponsored. Uh, R.A. Jeffries is going to provide some nice cocktails and drinks and some beers for us. And I, I, what I want to say, too, about this event is that it's very beach-themed. And one of the great things about it is that as soon as you walk in, there's going to be a steel drum band playing. So that really sets the tone for it. Very uh, tropical. Very tropical. And it's, yeah. We're going to have a DJ playing beach music. So if you, you like to get your shag on, yeah. <laughs> you have that. All sorts of different <laughs> beach opportunities. All right. And now, uh, is this going to be at the museum itself? At the museum on Thursday, July the 16th from 6 to 8 p.m. We want to encourage everyone to come dressed as a pirate. There will be a pirate costume contest held that evening. So to be clear, it's a martini party. For pirates. Absolutely. So yeah. you just come dressed up in your pirate costume. Right. We're in the pirate capital of the world. Yeah, absolutely. So, And uh, it's right in the middle of July, July 16th. Um, what, what about the time and the cost and all that, Luke? It's $20 for members, $30 for non-members. And one of the biggest things uh, is, is the raffle. So really? Dickie's is uh, the barbecue restaurant. Mm -hmm. Right. If you win the raffle, you get catering for 20 people at an ECU tailgate. Cool. And not only that, but the cheerleaders from ECU and PD himself will show Petey up. PD the pirate. All PD right. the pirate will show up. To your tailgate party. So if, you know, if you're in a fraternity or a sorority or a church group, this is a chance to get 20 people. That's a lot of barbecue. So yeah. thanks to Dickies for that. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so how do we get tickets? You can go online to goma.org mm -hmm. and just go to the events and schedule, and they're $10 for one mm -hmm. or three for 25 and you can just do it online, simple and easy. PayPal. Right. Use PayPal as well? Absolutely. Okay, good. All right, sounds good. All right, so it's the Jolly Argatini. Do it, do it, say it. The Jolly Argatini. Thank you, Stacey. <laughs> Coming up July 16th uh, from 6 to 8 p.m., early evening event. W what day of the week is that? Thursday. It's a Thursday. It's a third perfect night. Perfect night. $20 for members of the Greenville Museum of Art and $30 for non-members. And uh, just come up. Great food, great pirate costumes, and great uh, tropical martinis for the Arctini. All the money goes to support the museum, I guess. Right, yes, Stacey? it does. Yeah. Yes, it's a fundraiser for the Museum of Art. Right. Very good. All right, well, great. Thanks, you guys, for coming in. Thanks oh, for having good us. Good to see you. Us. Have you got your pirate costumes ready? Oh, I'm ready. You gonna? What are you going to be? I'm coming as a pirate. All right, very good. It's a um, surprise. You have Luke, to be you're gonna wear that. you going to wear that suit with a pirate tie? You or? know, I was thinking either that or um, uh, the guy from Princess Bride. Yeah. Yeah, or, oh, I'm, yeah. Call, I'm calling that one already. Yeah. <laughs> and my wife will be there. We'll be bartending. So Sweet. I'm hoping to get her to dress up as, <laughs> as the princess. So. Well, sounds like fun. All you It'll pirates, get out there and support the, uh, uh, the Greenville Museum of Art on the 16th of July. Good to see you guys. Good, Good to see you. you. Thanks for coming by. Thank you. All right, we've got a break. We're coming back. Patrick Johnson has sports when we come back. Stay with us.
Why pay three, four, even 500 a month for a new car when Greenville Toyota can cut it in half? The average car payment is 482 a month. Our average payment is less than half. At Greenville Toyota, if you give us 15 minutes, we can lower your payment. Greenville Country Club is under new management and ownership, and the golf course has never been better. Investment is being made into the club and the course along with Greenville's best family pool. Zero initiation fees and no monthly minimum. And right now, you can take advantage of the opening rate of just $250 per month for full family membership. Corporate and junior memberships are also available, including just $125 per month for members under 30. Call 252-756-1237 and join the family fun at the new Greenville Country Club. Club. Having a vision of what really matters is how we succeed. Keeping an eye on the ball, seeing all the things that we need. Focusing on the big picture, always striving to do what's right. Shop for price, shop for selection. East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep has the lowest prices and the largest selection in Eastern North Carolina. Get to the Drive and Discover event now and save up to $6,000 on a Chrysler 200 or come enjoy the weather and test drive a new Jeep Wrangler. Summer savings are here at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville or at ecauto.com. Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage Company is locally owned and operated serving all of Pitt and surrounding counties. Stallings Storage has all the standard sizes and also offers 20 by 40 units with 12 by 12 doors for all your large storage needs. Stallings Storage is the only local company providing mobile units 8 by 15, 8 by 10, or 5 by 8 delivered to your site. They deliver, pick up, and store it for you. It's that easy. No need to send your business out of town when your mobile storage needs can be met right here with people that you know. Hi, I'm Eddie Stallings, Stallings Mobile and Mini Storage. I'd like to invite you all out to visit our facility, check out our mobile storage units. We can bring them out to your home or business, leave them, let you fill them up, bring them back and store them, or take them to your next site. Please call us at 321-2300 or visit our website, stallingsstorage.com. And as always, we are Pirates supporting Pirates. Go Pirates. This month, not only will Greenville Toyota cut your payment in half, but you'll always get the Greenville Toyota Advantage, including oil changes, tire rotations, courtesy shuttle, free car washes, and loaners for life. At Greenville Toyota, if you give us 15 minutes, we can lower your payment. Talk of the town here on Monday morning, June the 29th. Temperatures uh, have gone up now, as we knew that they were. It's not going to be oppressive today, but temperatures now up to 73 degrees here in Greenville on our way to 88 degrees, and it's going to be a nice day across eastern North Carolina. Just going to be one of the best days we've had in a while. Certainly um, much better than last week. Uh, let's go to Raleigh now, standing by at the North Carolina Network Studios with our sports update. Here is our man, Patrick Johnson. Good morning, PJ. At CN Sports, I'm Patrick Johnson. Kyle Busch's comeback now includes a victory, a mere five races after he returned from serious injuries suffered the season opening weekend. Bush won on the road course at Sonoma Raceway after passing six cars in one lap on fresh tires. He passed Jimmy Johnson for the lead with six laps remaining. He said that was a key move towards his victory. I felt like the, the, the sooner the better. I couldn't let him hold me up. I couldn't let him break my momentum and everything that I had going. You know, it would just take too long for me to get it back or Boyer would catch up to me by then, you know. So I was fortunate when I was to, <clears throat> to get by him and then uh, to just try to set sail, just try to hit my marks and Man, those, those last three laps, I was trembling a little bit. NASCAR granted him a waiver that would make him eligible to participate in the postseason should Bush qualify, and Sunday's win moved him closer to a spot 
in the 16 driver chase field. Bubba Watson sank an eight foot birdie putt on the second playoff hole to beat Paul Casey and win the PGA's Traveler Championship for the second time. It's Bubba's second win on the tour this season. Watson recovered after a bogey on 17 allowed Casey to extend the tournament. Jeff Maggart closed with a five under 65 to win the senior U.S. Open at 10 under in Sacramento. Two shots ahead of defending champ Colin Montgomery. Maggart's second major senior title win of the year comes a month after his victory at the region's tradition. Grant Waite and Bernard Langer tied for third at seven under. First rounder Frank Kaminsky will be on the Hornets summer league roster. They begin play in Orlando on July 4th. In addition to Frank the Tank, the trades that brought Nicholas Batum Jeremy Lamb and Spencer Hawes to Charlotte have Coach Steve Clifford believing next year's team will be able to make a playoff run. Build a team where we can have a similar defense and then a greatly improved offense. And I believe that we've done those things where we can uh, improve our offense, okay? And yet, I mean, I still think that we have a, a good defensive roster. And there may be things that we may have to do a little bit differently and this and that, but, you, you know, look, balance wins, as you guys know. This is Itzy at Sports. Patrick sounded like somebody goosed him there. <laughs> Patrick Johnson with NC and Sports from Raleigh this morning. Good to hear Patrick's voice. When you hear Patrick, you, know, you start thinking about football season, too. Football season will be here before you know it. And uh, we always love all the great programming that Patrick does for us during the football season. All right, our news and sports this morning, our sports anyway, brought to you by our friends at Suddenlink. Uh, hey, the more web-enabled devices that you have, the faster Internet speed your home needs. And Suddenlink now offers the fastest speeds in North Carolina. In fact, I was talking to Jared Sonny, the main man at Suddenlink over the weekend, and he's got a big announcement coming up, which I told him he should come on the show and do, Michael. And uh, they've got enough bandwidth to power all of your devices, surfing, gaming, emailing, streaming video, and downloading. The online experience gets a whole lot better with suddenly high-speed Internet. If you're tired of being stuck in the last century... Now's the best time to switch up to blazing fast internet speeds from Suddenlink. There's no speed debate. Suddenlink has the fastest and most reliable connections in North Carolina. Gets TV, standard 75 meg, high speed internet, and home phone unlimited for only $33 per month per service when you bundle. Plus, you get Suddenlink's 30 day money back, and we promise guarantees with no contract required. And. Uh, Still some uh, great movies coming uh, to uh, Suddenlink on demand, video on demand. Um, I mentioned McFarland USA is playing right now. Also tomorrow, the uh, debut of uh, the Will Ferrell, Kevin Hart movie. Was it Get Hard? Which got funny reviews. So that uh, that starts tomorrow on video on demand, Get Hard on uh, Suddenlink. Call them at one 432 1184 and uh, get Suddenlink right now. Remember, no contract required with Suddenlink. 866-432-1184 or visit Suddenlink.com. All right, we got to get a break in. More Talk of the Town from Monday morning, June 29, as we roll through Monday. Beautiful Monday morning, high temperature today, going up to about 88 degrees. Not going to be stifling hot like last week. 73 right now at 8 minutes in front of 9 o'clock. We'll be right back. Win this new Mercedes-Benz with a 1 in 2,000 chance to win. It's the 2015 Pitt CC Foundation Mercedes-Benz Raffle. Buy your tickets now at PittCC.edu. That's PittCC.edu. Is it time for a new car or truck? Welcome to East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep. Come on inside. It is Ram Truck Month, and we have over 100 new Rams for you to choose from. That is the largest selection in the East. You also want to check out the new lineup of Jeeps, from the Wrangler to the new Grand Cherokee. Jeep is the hottest brand on the market this spring, and we've got a great selection to choose from. We'll see you at East Carolina Chrysler Dodge Jeep, across from the Cracker Barrel in Greenville. When you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. No matter where you go in Eastern Carolina, there's sure to be an attractive and always clean Trade Wilco Hess station nearby. For the absolute lowest prices on gas, groceries, and travel necessities, stop at any of the Trade Wilco Hess stations throughout Eastern Carolina. Keep your eyes on the road, but remember to look for the green and white Hess sign. The best part? No one supports the ECU Pirates more. So when you're on the go, it's Trade Wilco. Hey everybody, guess who's never danced with a girl before? 
Yeah, this guy. Come on, buddy, on the 2-4. 2-4. There you go. At Shaw Floors, we know the little moments matter. They're why we work so hard to put a carpet beneath his feet that's as awesome as he is. Boyd's Carpet, 115 West Fire Tower Road in Winterville. Call them at 321-7066. What if you could make this or this with less of this and definitely less of this and without this? Let Ann show you how with this. A great taste without the guesswork. Add Ann's chicken, vegetable, ham, or beef base to a variety of dishes. Deviled eggs, potato salad, and even coleslaw are taken to a whole new level by using Ann's The One dressing. Or easily liven up your favorite meat or seafood with Ann's The One sauce. Homemade, made easy. Look for this label at your local grocer or annsdumplings.com for more ideas. Have you heard? A 1 in 2,000 chance to win a new Mercedes-Benz. The 2015 PCC Foundation Mercedes-Benz Raffle. Buy your tickets now at pitcc.edu. That's pitcc.edu. Five minutes in front of nine here on Talk of the Town. Welcome back. Henry Hinton here with you this morning as we uh, clean up the show this morning. Get ready for another work day for everybody. Going to be nice today, 88 degrees. And as we head toward 4th of July weekend, the Washington Post this morning with a new article about the shark attacks off the coast of North and South Carolina. And uh, some interesting information in this article. This was just, uh, this is in this morning's Washington Post the article entitled Recent Shark Attacks Now Up to Seven in the Carolinas Puzzles Experts and Scares Beachgoers. Uh, nobody see, reading from the article, nobody seems sure why there have been more than normal number of shark attacks in the Carolinas this summer, but the simple fact is there are more sharks and more swimmers, according to both tourism experts and shark experts. And that's a recipe for a cross-species surf war, albeit... Uh, not one either sharks or humans seek. George Burroughs, who is head of the Florida Program for Shark Research at the Florida Museum of Natural History, says it's important to have this perspective so people don't get ahead of themselves and fear a Jaws scenario. It's, attempting, uh, it's tempting to assume the worst when pictures of, of sharks start circulating online, but it's particularly troubling when the series of attacks has predominantly affected young people. But what's more likely happening is North Carolina beachgoers are not used to looking for sharks and may be caught off guard as other factors draw sharks closer to shore, according to this gentleman from the Florida Shark Research Institute. He says, it's not like swimming in a YMCA pool. The onus is on us humans now to adapt. But I got to tell you something. Yeah, I don't know how you see, I don't know how you prepare for sharks. I don't know how you see one coming. Hard to see one coming. 18-year-old boy off uh, Outer Banks bitten on Saturday. Another attack on Friday in uh, South Carolina on a 43-year-old man at Hunting Island State Park. And my take on this is that it's 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 there's nothing unusual about it. I just I just think we're beginning to I think we now know this started happening last year. I think we now know more about these shark bites because I remember years ago somebody told me the other day. You know I never heard of a shark bite down on the Crystal Coast. Well I know someone whose wife was actually bitten by a shark down on the Crystal Coast a few years ago. I just think it happens occasionally. But with the millions of people in the water, it's still very a minute issue. But it is worth noting and, you know, making sure that small kids are aware and that you're aware of having small kids uh, be careful and that kind of thing. You know, we're all concerned that it would affect the tourism business, but at the same time, we got to be realistic about it. You know, it does happen, and it is happening. 
But I think the, the my guess is that it's not happening at any more of an alarming rate than it's ever happened. We just n now know more about it because the minute it happens, it's on Facebook. I think that's what happens. So go to the beach this weekend and enjoy yourself and don't worry about it. Look, it's more dangerous driving to the beach than it is getting in the water. <laughs> the chances of you... <laughs> Getting hurt or probably more, you know, just walking around the house and slipping on a banana peel than getting bit by a shark based on the number of people that get in the water and the number that actually have to endure a shark bite. That's my little commentary on it. All right, that is our uh, Monday Talk of the Town. Uh, enjoy this beautiful weather this week. going to be nice. And uh, Walter Jones and the Lieutenant Governor on the show tomorrow. We'll see you then.